everyone, thanks for tuning in to D News Plus again today. I am Trace, and this is our episodes for Shark Week. We're on episode three of five of our Shark Week series. Make sure you watch Shark Week all this week on Discovery Channel. It's awesome. But so far we've talked about sharks and how they got here and how they evolved and why they're so excellent and why they may have superpowers. If you don't understand that, you should go back and watch those episodes. But today we're gonna talk about why sharks aren't a danger to humans. I know you've been taught otherwise, I know. So have we all. But it's not actually true that they are a danger to us. Stick around, make sure you subscribe for more D News Plus, let's kick into it. So as we covered in episode one, sharks have become things to fear, based mostly on things from pop culture, right? Tall tales and things like that, they are scary. And every time the news puts a shark attack victim on TV, that person has gone through something very traumatic. But sharks themselves aren't out to get you. They're using those shark superpowers of theirs to try and go out and find prey, to try and eat. They just wanna eat, they just wanna get through their day. You know, they're just being sharks, trying to get through their day. And I know most of you uh, who are watching this now probably know in your mind how rare shark attacks really are. The statistics, you know, that say you're more likely to die of bees and vending machines falling on you and, you know, make, making selfies and whatever else. But how true is all this? How dangerous are sharks? So. Yes, sharks kill people, they absolutely do. Just as bears kill people when you're in the woods or dinosaurs if you were to get into my time machine and go back in time, because you know, you'd be inside of the home of an apex predator. This is their terrain, this is their water. And their only job is to eat and reproduce. So stuff's bound to go down, yo. If you walk up into my house, I'm the apex predator in my house, I'm probably gonna bite you. It's just not that common. The international group Oceana, they tallied it at about 36 shark attacks per year between 2006 and 2010, and 4.2 of those were fatal attacks. The Florida Museum of Natural History's International Shark Attack File, which is a real thing, no one ever calls it this, but I think it's funny to call it FNMSAF. Anyway, they have about six fatal shark attacks per year from 2005 to 2014. But it might be getting more common in 2015, the all-time record was set for unprovoked shark attacks, meaning that no one punched or grabbed the shark and it attacked people. And it might be because of global warming and also El Nino. See, sharks like warmer waters. So areas of the sea with warmer waters, that's where the sharks will go. That only increases, of course, the chance of human-shark interaction because we also enjoy warmer waters. And that's why when New York recently saw its 10th recorded shark attack ever, it was in part because of this. However, these numbers aren't exactly stable. In 2014, that actually had the lowest number of shark attacks since 2009, but each of the last 11 decades has seen more and more shark attacks. And it could just be because more and more people are in the ocean, in the shark's habitat. It also could be because of global warming. These are complex things. So. Yes, shark attacks can happen unprovoked. And this just means not so much that we should be afraid of sharks, but that we should be aware of their presence and aware that we are in their territory. And one reason is a lot of different shark species exist. There are 400 different species of sharks and only about 12 of those have ever been known to attack humans and only three are responsible for most of those attacks. So three out of 400 is actually a pretty great ratio. Those three, in case you're curious, great white, tiger and bull sharks. But again, 400 species, and only three of them are responsible for most of the attacks. Basically, if you're out in the ocean, there is a good chance that there's a shark nearby. There's a very bad chance, a very low chance that the shark cares that you're there. They're busy doing their shark thing. Sharks don't want to eat you. We are not part of their ecosystem. They don't have a taste for human. They don't have any interest in us. They don't specifically hunt us down, they, they don't have malice, you know. Sharks don't hunt us, which is very important because when you're the prey that's being hunted, you'd probably know it, and then you should be worried. Many shark attacks are sharks mistaking the person for their normal prey, like fish, a turtle, or seal. And then they take a bite, they realize, oh, <laughs> this tastes funny, this isn't what I wanted. And then they, you know, they peace out. Thanks for the snack. Sorry, 
This is a minor incident when it's a small shark, you know, and it thinks that you're a small fish, so it takes a bite and, oh, that tastes weird. <laughs> Get out of here. But when it's a big shark, it can be very serious. More damage is going to be done if it's a tiger shark, a great white, or a bull shark. I mean, if you give your dad your cheeseburger, he's going to take a dad bite. He's your dad. That's the deal. You give your little teeny sister, your baby cousin, a bite of your cheeseburger, it's no big deal. But either way, they're going to take a bite because that cheeseburger looks delicious. That's off topic. There are two reasons that sharks will take a bite of your cheeseburger. They will either accidentally take a bite because you bump into them, you know, they'll get the sneak attack up in there. And those two different things can happen if you are there around feeding time or if the shark is being hostile or feels threatened and wild animals can have this happen. If it feels trapped, you're not necessarily going to know that, but if you get too close to it, it's going to lash out to protect itself. And if it's hungry and it thinks there's food around and you are too close, it's going to grab you to check and see if you're food. Both of those things are completely natural behaviors that any animal would do, but for some reason, when it comes to sharks, we attribute it to malice. And there's shark attacks that mostly are just cases of mistaken identity. And then there are also fatalities, and it's usually because the shark just bit too hard, not because you were a particularly delicious looking morsel. So we're kind of talking about this in general. Let's get down to the, to the nitty gritty, right? Let's, let's get into the odds. Most popular thing when we're talking about sharks are the odds of being attacked by a shark. Everybody likes talking about that. The International Shark Attack File calculated this and it looked at the 2003 population of the United States, which was 290,850,005. They divided that by the number of shark attack deaths, which was not very many, by the way, six. Then they divided that life expectancy of someone who was born in that same year, 2003, 77.6 years. The ISAF website has the odds written as this, one in 3.748067 million, almost 3.75 million, one in 3.75 million. That is very small. So averaging out the ISAF and the Oceana figures, let's say there's about five deaths from sharks per year. This falls below all of these other things, like five deaths per year, that's way lower than 36 people in the US who died from dog attacks this year. 83 who died from being hit by a non-dog mammal, like a cow or a horse. 900 in the US from riding a bike. Five from venomous snakes or lizards. So about the same as a shark. 13 from non-powered aircraft, like a glider or a hot air balloon. Hot air balloons have killed more people than sharks. And 116 by explosions. And these are just in the US, by the way. These are numbers from the CDC. So because not that many sharks even have a desire to attack you, they don't like the taste of you, just by those two things, you, you shouldn't be afraid of sharks. But if you still are for some reason, that's fine. There are tips to minimize attention from sharks, and here they are. In the rare, rare case that it comes after you also, I will fill you in on what to do. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says, one, stay in a group because sharks are less likely to attack people in groups. They will mostly attack prey that are alone. Be aware of what time of day you are in the vicinity of a shark because sharks feed mostly early in the morning or late in the afternoon. And don't go in the water if you're bleeding because blood and sharks make sense. Studies also showed that they're attracted to a fluid made in the abdominal cavity, which I think is pronounced peritoneal fluid. It lubricates tissue that lines the abdominal wall. So apparently don't go into the water if you have a hole in your abdomen. Makes sense. Probably stings because it's salt water. But others think that our blood smells differently than seal blood, so maybe blood isn't that big a deal. And of course, uh, yes, commenters, before you get down there, people have studied menstrual blood. Some say that they can smell it, but some say that they're not really sure and it's better to be safe than sorry. That's all I'm gonna say about that. They also say don't wear shiny jewelry or clothing that can be mistaken for something that would resemble a fish scale. An obvious one would be don't swim near sharks when they're feeding. Don't do it if you don't wanna be eaten by a shark. Or swim where fishermen are normally catching sharks. Don't splash around like an injured animal. I don't know why you would do that anyway. Uh, and other tips are things like don't touch sharks if you see them. Don't swim in dirty or murky water so you can see if there's a shark below you. Don't swim around animals that sharks usually hunt. And don't, of course, be a seal. I think that one's more than obvious. Just my, my tip. 
If you ignore all these tips and somehow are unlucky enough to be attacked or think you're being attacked by a shark, some people say punch the shark in the nose, uh, but that's not the best. In fact, aim for the eyeballs and don't use your bare hands. If you have something that you can hit the shark with, aim for the eyes with that object. Also, don't play dead, because sharks don't really care. They're not thinking about whether you're dead or alive. Like, oh, <laughs> he's dead, I thought he was alive. Guess I won't eat him today. They're gonna go for you anyway. And also, you can uh, punch at the gills if you can't reach the eyes for some reason. If you escape, just GTFO. Just get out of there. You're probably gonna be bleeding if that's the case. That won't be good, uh, and if you don't know why uh, that would not be good. Go back and watch our previous episodes about how sharks have superpowers because they are amazing. Sharkman and Sharkwoman are going to be the newest superheroes at Marvel. Trust me. Anyway, don't forget to watch all of Shark Week this week on Discovery Channel. Let us know down in the comments if you have any other ideas about episodes that we should do and tell us about your favorite shark superpower because, come on, they have superpowers. They totally do. And make sure you stay tuned for tomorrow's episode when we talk about how humans may be more dangerous to sharks than sharks are to us. Thanks for tuning in to DNews Plus, everybody. I'm Trace. Come find me on Twitter at Trace Dominguez. You can find the show at DNews. If you have any topic ideas, tweet at us with the hashtag DNews Plus. See you next time.